All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are here for uh, the PowerShell Core Community Call of July 2018. Um, I've got Tyler and Sean in the room with me. Yes. Yeah. Recording. I am recording it. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and quit this, and I'm going to go ahead and present my desktop. Um, so you can see all the fun stuff. So I uh, got a couple announcements uh, right off the bat. Um, we are working on getting the 603 release and a uh, PowerShell uh, 61 preview 4 release out this week. Uh, so both of those uh, you should you should expect to see if you guys are on the stable train, which uh, our, our GitHub dashboard uh, shows that most of you are not on the stable train. Most of you are, are actually um, rocking on the previews. Uh, but if you're on the stable train, definitely make sure to get those servicing updates. Um, we, yeah, there's some security security stuff there uh, that we're doing with the servicing. Um, additionally, uh, Preview 4 is going to be jam-packed uh, with new stuff. Um, I actually, did the compatible PS editions change? Do you know if that made it into Preview 4? Rob was working on. Oh, um, I don't know, actually. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the Windows compatibility stuff um, as we have the last couple of weeks. Um, as many of you may have seen on Twitter, uh, we shipped a version of the Active Directory module in the latest Insider Builds um, that is PowerShell Core compatible. Um, so RSAT, uh, the Remote Server Administrative Tools, now ship as a feature on demand in Windows 10, um, and uh, you can install that via the Insider Builds. Um, and you're going to get a module that is PS Core compatible. Hey Keith, like Keith, walk in the room. Um, so uh, I should be writing this down as I go here. Um, but the yeah Active Directory module uh, in latest Insider Build uh, is PS Core compatible. Um, the other thing you're going to start seeing is modules in Windows um, that have uh, the compatible PS Editions uh, manifest field. Um, so, did you see something in the chat here that was relevant? Uh, preview 4, it did. Make oh, it did make it. Okay, yeah. So, so we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. So, um, basically, you're going to start seeing these module manifests where uh, compatible PS editions is set in the System32 module. So, um, if you go into uh, System32, Windows PowerShell, V1.0, uh, modules, I'm hoping that one of these here I can show... Uh, like diagnostics. Um, nope, didn't make it in there yet. Um, do you know one of the first ones you did? Uh, probably. Uh, I don't know. In any case, you're going to see. Uh, you know, in in your. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a key here called compatible PS editions like this. Um, and basically that thing gets set to either uh, desktop um, or core or both of desktop and core. Um, and in most cases, you're going to see either desktop or desktop and core. And basically what's happening is that uh, starting in preview four, um, system 32 is going to be included in the PowerShell core PS module path by default. Um, and as a result of that, uh, PowerShell Core would normally get every single module that ships into System32, all these modules right here. Um, but we've added a check uh, specifically for System32, and this did go through the RFC process. We had a, uh, some discussion about this, I think, earlier. Um, but basically, if the module is set to Core, um, it will be shown uh, in your Get Module list available. If it's not, it won't show up in this list of modules that are available to you, despite the fact that those modules live in the PS module path. Um, there is a skip addition check uh, parameter that we added to both um, get module and to import module um, that will uh, allow you to override this if you know what you're doing and you're like, no, nah, this module will load just fine. Um, but basically, us marking that module as core tells you and PowerShell Core that we've worked with the feature team here to validate that that module is core compatible, um, that it's supported in PowerShell Core, and that you can trust to use it in your 
will close uh, going forward. So um, this is really, you know, we, we've heard loud and clear that, that module coverage is the number one adoption blocker to PowerShell 4, um, specifically Active Directory, but, but really a long tail of modules. Um, and we're working very hard to make sure that in, in Server 2019 and in the next release of Windows 10 that these modules are, are validated and, and marked as compatible um, so that they work great with PowerShell Core. So um, this has been a really long effort from the team. Um, it's, it's really uh, quite an exercise working with all these feature teams. So, uh, you know, we, we hope that, that it works great and we want to hear from you guys as you see these modules trickle in, which ones are important to you and, you know, we, we've we prioritize generally based on, on our knowledge of, of the kind of stuff that's important to you guys, but, but really if there are modules that are still missing from your list now that the almighty Active Directory has been conquered, um, please let us know. Um, cool. Uh, let's see here. What was next on the agenda? Um, PowerShell Core, as I said, we're, we're shipping those releases. Um, we do, oh, we want to talk briefly um, about the, the release dates. So. Um, Let's, uh, let's, let's talk about that real quick. So basically, um, you know, we, we originally committed to this. Uh, I can't type and talk at the same time. Sorry, guys. Um, we, we had originally committed to this six-month cadence, right? So um, we said we're shipping uh, in, or we did ship 6.0 in January. Um, and so by virtue of that, we should have shipped, uh, you know, 6.1 on July 10th or whatever. Um, obviously, we didn't. Um, we've decided, uh, based off of some of the stuff that's happening in .NET Core that we really would love to have for 6.1, um, based off of this sort of spike that we did in order to support all these modules in Windows, uh, and because it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be working super hard around the holidays trying to ship a release out, um, that we're going to move our cadence to more of an August, uh, February or, uh, uh, you know, late August, late February, early March type cadence. Um, so we're not trying to make a habit out of this. Um, we do still want to commit to this six-month cycle, um, but we think that, you know, August and, and uh, uh, Feb, March makes a little more sense, um, you know, given, given the scheduling around Ignite, um, given the fact that, uh, you know, people are, are kind of on vacation in both the middle of the summer and the middle of the holidays, um, and, and it really just uh, kind of makes everything easier for everybody if we if we ship on that cadence. So, um, yeah, the uh, just you're, you're probably not going to see PowerShell Core 61 GA until uh, mid to late August. Uh, so, you know, keep your eyes peeled. Hopefully, that doesn't impact you guys too much. As I said, I, I do want to show real quick the um, the PowerShell GitHub dashboard because um, we were looking over a lot of this data this week, um, and it, and it is very interesting how much. Um, you know, I mean, we, we don't technically support, uh, you know, this version of PowerShell right here. This is, this is a uh, preview two. Um, I think preview three had a little slower adoption, but in July people were, you know, primarily using preview two, um, you know, followed by 602 as sort of the, uh, this thin little bar here. Um, so it's very interesting that, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot more usage of the preview installs. Um, additionally, we're, we're coming up on... Oh no! Why am I no longer presenting? It's like way behind. It's moving my mouse, but you can't see what's on my screen. <laughs> That's very strange. Okay. If I minimum, okay, I'm gonna stop presenting and then start representing. Stop sharing. Good old Skype for business. We got this. Hey, Travis. Got Travis Plunk in the room now. And Jim. And Jim, and Jim Truer. See my screen again at some point. Perfect. Uh, let's try this one more time. Rome does not want to present. I put Chrome on the screen and it like freeze frames everything. Cool. Let's try Edge. Like now you can see my screen again. And you 
can see my edge. Awesome. Nice. All right, let's talk through that one more time. So this dark blue bar here is the Preview 2 releases. So it's very interesting that you guys seem to be using Preview 2 uh, a lot more than even Preview 3, uh, but specifically these two preview releases added up are significantly more than this dark gray bar here, which is 602. Um, so, uh, you know, it's... I think it actually speaks to the stability of, of PowerShell Core 6.1. Uh, there's some other less generous interpretations that are possible, but um, you know, I think given that I uh, just make Jim happy because you know there's there's a lot of ways to interpret data, um, but but I think given the stability of, of it and the fact that I use it as my daily driver, uh, you know, it's it's pretty awesome that we're keeping the master branch as stable as it is. Um, you'll also see in June we're we're coming up on three million monthly starts. Um, and, uh, you know, July, you know, we might be a little bit lower here, might have something to do with the holidays, but, um, you know, it's really interesting to see this, this giant bar on Linux, right? I, this is like 80, 85% of our instances are on Linux. Um, makes a little bit of sense given that Windows PowerShell ships inside of Windows, but uh, I am very interested to see if this yellow bar grows relatively now that we've, uh, you know, started to build up the module coverage. So we'll see how that goes over time. Um, cool. Any questions on any of that stuff? Cloud Shell will probably increase the usage. We are trying to figure out how we can maybe differentiate some of this telemetry, uh, you know, from Cloud Shell instances. Cloud Shell instances, um, but you know, we we didn't flip the switch of Cloud Shell over to Linux in a few weeks ago. So it's been, I think it was July third. Um, so even this is. Uh, Oh, I'm getting somebody in the background there. Is somebody asking a question? Jump the volume locally. Uh, we're at pretty high. I think it was just background noise. I don't see anyone actually continuing to talk. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, now, uh, I think... We want to talk a little bit about Tra Travis and, and Jim. You guys are, are shipping this release. Do you want to talk at all about any nuances with the 603 or preview four releases that are going out right now? Uh, no, Travis is. I'm just running the tests on the Linux systems. Okay. We've seen definite issues with Windows 18, but we believe those to actually be platform issues. Uh, yeah, I heard it was maybe Azure and or WSL specific. Well, we believe that there is a. The Azure VMs are created with a certain set of packages, but if you actually install desktop, for example, you have no problem okay. executing these, Interesting. These, these issues. These issues don't appear. It's both 603 and uh, 613. Definitely or. something about the Ubuntu packages that are uh, in, uh, interrupting the way uh, the package management uh, commandments work. We haven't just we haven't determined what it is yet. We're still investigating. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully we don't end up delaying the release for this week. I think, uh, you know, again, there are these a couple of weird testing issues around Ubuntu 18, but uh, hopefully, you know, if even if we are not able to mitigate those problems uh, by the end of the week, I, I think I might be working with these guys to, to come up with a plan to ship the rest of the package uh, for the other platforms until we're able to, to get Ubuntu 18 working. So, um, Ah, great point, Darwin. Thank you. So apparently, Preview 2 was the last one that we marked as automatic upgrade in the stable package. So people have been upgraded up to Preview 2 because it was a upgrade of PowerShell, PowerShell package, and we didn't instantiate the PowerShell Preview package until Preview 3. So it's likely that people don't necessarily know that they're working on the Preview stuff. Um, and so uh, let's race to 6.1 GA, get that problem <laughs> fixed. Um, unfortunately, I don't know that there's a way to forcibly downgrade people back to stable. Um, so yeah, the truth will be known on the next Pro GA. You are correct, Darwin. Not um, until we get to 6.1. Right. Yeah, next next Pro GA. Um, so yeah, that's uh, this is why I have you guys. You're the best uh, in interpreting my data better than I can. Um, Steve said he would mention that, but he's not here. Okay, well, yeah. So Steve's Steve's on a vacation, but uh, I guess guess he knew about this. Um, 
yeah, we will know the truth uh, of people's trust of the product for real after uh, we ship 6.1 GA here. Um, there was one last, uh, I'm just blanking right now. Oh, we got a blog going out tomorrow. Um, Travis has been working very closely with the folks over at Canonical um, to build us a PowerShell Snap package. Um, so for those that don't know, Snap is a package format um, that's one of these sort of uh, fully containerized, uh, safe to install, uh, you know, they, they it, okay. You're, Full, you're, fully containerized is not right. Containerized. It's, 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 a, it's an application the package that ships all its dependencies with itself, um, and it has a sandbox of sorts um, that, it, that it runs within. But to use PowerShell, um, you have to disable the sandbox. So... We install as a classic package. Um, in any case, keep your eyes peeled on the PowerShell blog. We're publishing it tomorrow. Um, we have been a featured snap um, for, for the last week, week and a half. What are we, uh, we have active installs is the number that they track here. Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. We're up at 2,700, 2,800. Okay, cool. So these are, these are not um, unique starts of PowerShell, but actually uh, unique machines, users who have installed on a machine, so 2,800 uh, of those, and we expect that to grow after the vlog. Unique the active devices. Unique active devices, okay. Let's, yeah, we want to get that onto our dashboard as well, so we're uh, going to try and consolidate some more of this sort of download or, or you know, store data that we have um, into one place, so uh, let me see here. Um, 6.0, 6 what did I say, 6.04, 6, yeah, 6.04 and uh, next one, preview 4. Wait, 6.04 or 6.03? Um, the next one's 6.03. 6.03, thank you. Um, uh, release later this week. Oh. Yeah, what do we got? Are there any plans to offer some Azure Linux VM images with pre-installed PowerShell Core? Um, we're talking about it. I will be honest with you, uh, my, my world has been mostly consumed, uh, and, and a lot of our worlds have been mostly consumed, um, with getting this Windows module coverage problem uh, figured out, um, and in shipping the previews and servicing packages that we already uh, have committed to. Um, so a lot of the Azure integration has sort of fallen by the wayside in the last couple months. Um, I am aware that Amazon Linux um, ships uh, their default images with both NetCore and PowerShell Core. Um, that's something we definitely want to get to. Uh, but really, we've been fighting against the, the Windows scheduling cycle and making sure that, that everything that we do here is going to make it into Windows Server 2019. And so given that sort of cliff, um, this is why a lot of our resources and time has been diverted to working on the Windows stuff. Uh, because there is sort of this scheduling deadline. Now that we're reaching that point, um, and there's less of a, of a forcing function, or we're going to have to sort of be okay with, with as far as we get, um, our eyes are turning to Azure. So we're discussing um, really a lot of different integrations that we can do with Azure. Um, I know, you know, Keith's been investigating stuff in SSH land. We've been talking to some compute folks about some stuff. Um, obviously, uh, the way Cloud Shell's been going and, and with Azure PowerShell, uh, you know, continuing to to build its support for Net Core. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff happening there. So we hope that as these this sort of critical mass and momentum builds, that that there's going to be a, a much stronger case uh, for us to go into the uh, the, the Azure Linux images. Um, oh, awesome, Darwin. So it's they're not on there by default, uh, but they have a an image that's got them. I cool. Um, I am not sure about the MSIX question. Um, yeah, we're, we're talking here specifically about uh, Linux, the snap packages. Um, so they're, they're not a Windows thing. Um, yeah, um, it'll be more clear when we get that blog published. Um, and Canonical or Snapcraft will have one out as well uh, to, to talk about how we've worked with them. Um, I did not realize that. We, I got to get the MSIX primer from you, Darwin. Um, I still have not had the chance to look into there. Um, ping for later. Any further news on DSC Core? No news today. Um, you know, I, I 
unfortunately don't have Michael Green here, although I, I can make a note to uh, include him um, on the next call uh, to make sure that we have some, uh, we get a, a status update on that. Um, cool. Uh, I think that's about it for PowerShell, unless Jim and Travis can think of anything else that we have to talk about. I'm happy taking questions um, on PowerShell now, but there'll be time for questions at the end as well. Um, I do want to call out, I, I don't know if you want to take the, the lead on this one, Tyler, but I, I want to call out the announcement that, that we made um, on the announcement blog. Um, basically, Tyler has a, a published, uh, oh, I can't use Chrome, that's right. Oh, or I can. It works fine now. Uh, Let's lock your screen in a minute. Yeah, for whatever reason. Um, so basically, we've posted here in the PowerShell announcements, uh, do you, you want to speak to this? Okay, okay, I'm doing so well. Uh, this is a, a, a critical remote code execution advisory. Um, so we, we did some uh, security penetration testing on the VS Code extension, um, and there are some instances where, uh, you know, it's possible in some constrained, uh, you know, scenarios um, to, to do some remote code execution if you've got VS Code running. Um, so basically, you should, you should update, as you should always update. Um, if you're if you're at version 170 or lower, you are affected, um, and this gives you uh, outlines for um, how you can install or, or update with the console, how you can do it within the GUI. Um, I, I think most of you using this thing know how to do this, um, but but basically, just make sure you you update your your VS Code extension uh, for PowerShell to the very latest. Um, do you have any other updates, Tyler, on the VS Code or editor services stuff you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, can you go to the marketplace page? Marketplace.studio.com. Check this morning. And then just find the PowerShell one. You search for it. I thought you were going to tell me we were the number one. Number oh, one yeah. featured. We are the number one PowerShell extension on the Visual Studio Marketplace. Not by relevance. Apparently, not by relevance. This is, is what we want is oh, uh, the VS Studio code, code right? yeah. Uh, top. Though. Okay. Top dead center. Top dead center. Very, very top. Visual Studio code. Oh, 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 oh. I'm not even in the, I'm, I'm completely in the wrong everything. Got it. That makes more sense. Awesome. <laughs> there it is. Look at that. Three million installs. We just passed that number a few days ago. Nice. It's pretty big. Um, yeah. I mean, that's that's really all I wanted to bring up. I guess I could have <laughs> just said that, but we have hit three million. That's great. We've, we've hit three million. Let's see where we go from here. Uh, but things are going well. Yeah, it's uh, we're we're cranking on the VS Code extension. Um, you know, this is uh, I know Tyler tweeted there was a. a a review that got posted here the other day saying, hey, you know, you finally reached a point where I can switch from the ISC, um, and that's the kind of thing we love to hear. Yeah. Obviously, if there are still blockers for that, make sure you file them on uh, on the repo. But I know um, uh, Seemingly Science is, uh, Patrick um, has been cranking on PS read line support. It's looking great. Um, you know, I, I know that uh, there's been some major refactoring underway um, to, to make things faster and, and more stable in the debugger, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, things are things are moving along pretty well there. Um, Tyler and Rob are, are doing a lot of the work on the on the VS Code extension, but they've also been, uh, you know, two of the primary people helping me out on the Windows effort. So that might be why you've seen some lower engagement there. But as again, as that Windows effort comes to a close, um, you're you're going to. Um, Cool. I'm going to read this later. Thank you, Darwin. Uh, Driscoll's relevance plus plus. Absolutely, he's still crushing it on the uh, official VS VS extension yeah. for PowerShell. Um, I know there was an effort underway for a while for him to move to editor services. Yeah, he's um, he's working on it. Um, I think he published a preview of it too on the Visual Studio marketplace. So yeah, look for that. And uh, I think he's working on getting all the debugging hooked up as well, if he hasn't done that yet. Uh, but yeah, and that's coming as well. Cool. Also using editor services. Yeah, great. so you know, for those of you that aren't totally aware, uh, editor services is this 
uh, sort of back-end generic framework for building these editor plugins. So, um, you know, it's been used to support Sublime, Vim, uh, obviously VS Code, Adam's moving to a provisional studio. Having this unified code base of, of one editor uh, sort of platform uh, really allows us to build these features out for, for everybody much quicker. Um, let's see this general PowerShell update question. Um, we get this one a lot. It's really hard. Uh, it's a lot harder than you might initially think that it is. And primarily that's because uh, if you're running in PowerShell, um, it's hard for PowerShell to update itself. Right, um, so you have this sort of uh, you know cyclical issue where you're like, okay, I'm I can't kill PowerShell to replace PowerShell until I, you know, stopped PowerShell. So um, we've talked about the benefits maybe of of having some command that tells you, uh, you know, PowerShell is is uh, out of date and run this thing. Um, but generally speaking, I find that it's best for individual platforms to take care of their own packages. Um, you know how you update, you know, applications and packages on the given operating system that you're running on, um, and you should probably continue using that mechanism. Obviously, that's not as great on Windows, um, but we do support Microsoft Update. I think 603, did we say, is going to go out via Microsoft Update? Uh, it'll be delayed after release uh, for more, more than a week after the release. So in a week or two, uh, more than a week, so two or, two or three weeks, two or three uh, we will have a package that gets published to uh, Microsoft Update. So in addition to the, uh, you know, obviously using apt update or um, any of the other uh, Linux or, or Mac OS homebrew package managers, um, you know, you're just going to use that mechanism for updating. Um, but if you've got that magic box checked in your settings um, that says, uh, you know, the, let's see here. Go to Windows Update Settings. Um, you know, if you guys use the Update Catalog, uh, you know, you use WSUS, it's going to show up there. Um, but additionally, if you look at Advanced Options here, there is this uh, Give Me Updates for Other Microsoft Products When I Update Windows. And that is Microsoft Update. And if you use that, then eventually PowerShell Core 603 will show up as a package here uh, as a servicing update for you to install. So um, unfortunately, yeah, not quite as up to date as, you know, exactly when the package gets published. Um, but you will uh, you will see it there eventually. Um, I don't see any more questions on the update issue, um, but we I think we might do we have like a, a script in the PowerShell repo that actually does this like tries to just get the latest version. Uh, yeah, um, install PowerShell.ps1 does this already. Uh, yeah, so we do have um, this script for those of you that are looking for it. Um, I think it's in our tools directory. Um, basically, this install PowerShell.ps1 will install the latest version for the given platform that you're on. Um, again, this is a bit of a bootstrap issue, and it doesn't really make sense to ship as part of PowerShell Core, because by the time you have PowerShell Core, uh, you don't need this anymore. Um, so, uh, you know, this is something that you can run from uh, Windows PowerShell, um, or this .sh script works as well. You could run this from Bash on any Linux or, or Mac OS machine, and depending on the platform you're on, it'll get the right one. But uh, uh, just to be aware, on Windows, uh, that will put you on a path that you won't be serviced by Windows Update. Right. In order to be serviced by Microsoft Update, you must install via the MSI. That is correct. And, and that's another problem with the idea of updating through a command like that. Uh, it's almost certain that we would no longer be able to service you through your Windows update. Right. So if you're installing via this, you're on your own. Just know that uh, you know we, we can't can't help you there. Um, I do see a question coming through. Uh, unfortunately, Chrome's frozen my screen again, despite the fact that I minimized it. Um, I'm not even in Chrome anymore. Oh, my God. I don't understand. Uh, build Chrome. Great. Okay, well, you're going to have to go without seeing my notes for a minute. Hopefully, this thing just revs itself. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing, reshare. Hold on. Um, the question is, I have a small IC switching blocker. It's not a PowerShell team. The areas around the Azure Automation SMA runbook management tool in ISC, what's the best way to interact with whatever team is responsible for that? That is 
I already responded. Oh, you did? Yeah. Scroll down. You said... So it's possible to build the IC add-on from source where it can then work in VS Code and in Visual Studio. Oh, interesting. And oh, of course it does that. That answered Adam's question. Um, however, it is a shame that you have to build it from source in order to actually get that. I don't know who owns this add-on, but maybe we can find out and try to see if we can get them to release. I am going to take an AI. That's our immediate team. My boss's boss uh, is over all of that stuff. So, so uh, we will find out who owns that. And, and you know, I can't promise that it's going to be a top priority for anybody right now. But I do know um, Steve has also been investigating uh, stuff around the automation extension um, because I do know that, that a lot of people want that. And again, we were talking about more ways we can integrate with Azure and, and really you know, help contribute more to Azure's success. And this is definitely one of those things I think that, that really makes people's lives better. Eamon O'Reilly. Yes, Eamon is the guy. Um, you are correct, Alexander. But I, uh, I, I'm aware, I'm just gonna go back to him and, and talk to him. I'm a boss. Yes, about uh, the ISC extension. Issue to like have a release. Um, okay, so can you please send a link to the CVE representing the VS Code Posh extension vulnerability? Uh, yes, that yeah, you did that. Hit. Awesome. The link to the announcement should have a link to the CVE. You sent a link to the announcement. Or yeah, was that an old question? That's an old question. Interesting, fantastic, awesome. I need to build or help push that forward. Awesome, building it from source to blocker. Yeah, no, we. I mean, building it from source is not what we're saying is the solution here. Obviously, uh, there's. Uh, it will it will help you run it today if you want it, um, but we we would need to to talk to the automation team about getting it officially released. Um, it always happens. I get the uh, I get lost in, in speech here and end up taking no notes, but. Um, Stuff about VS Code. I'll go back and fix it up. Um, cool. Uh, do you want to talk? Is there anything in documentation land you want to talk about, uh, Sean? Any major updates in the last month? Um, no. I guess the biggest thing affecting us right now is um, well, two things I'll talk about. Um, Mark Dig migration. So we're changing our rendering engine for the web pages um, to Mark Dig, which changes some of the formatting rules for Markdown. <coughs> um, Mark Dig uses the common Mark specification for Markdown. So the, the biggest areas where things have changed is in list items and how you indent them. Um, indention should always be the first character after the list item marker. So if it's an unordered list, like a bullet list, then it's the first character or three spaces. Uh, that's where the, the, the sub-bullet needs to line up. Um, correct. Yeah, so I'm doing it wrong in this uh, because it, I like my four taps, four spaces. Um, but yeah, there's some stuff might change and, and formatting might break and right. people should be aware that and if it's a numbered item, it lines up with the first character after the period after the number. So if it's a two-digit number, that's yeah, four spaces. If it's a single-digit number, that's three spaces. Right. And so on. Um, keep your eyes peeled and file issues. Yeah. So we're working through those things. So you might see, you know, all the information there on the page, but numbering restarts because things aren't indented properly, things like that. Um, we haven't made the switch to the new engine yet and probably won't until late August or sometime in September. Um, the other thing is just um, to remind folks that the SDK documentation has moved out of MSDN. Um, and needs a lot of love. <laughs> we are getting a lot of um, PRs to fix things um, already on the SDK documentation, but uh, 
any additional help is uh, much appreciated. Yeah, I have it in my backlog, maybe deeper than I'd like, but uh, it, at some point I want to do like a major refactor of the informational architecture, uh, the, basically the, the table of contents of the SDK content. Um, it just makes a lot of uh, sort of anachronistic uh, divisions between IT pros and developers. Um, you know, you guys more and more are DevOps. DevOps, right? Yeah, it's it's uh, you're, you're you're doing both, and it really doesn't make sense to say, hey, like this is a over here, this is a great commandlet design, and over here, this is how you actually build a commandlet and write it, and over here, way on this other thing is how it works in C sharp. Um, you know, there's a lot of room for optimization here. So, uh, you know, definitely keep 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 the PRs coming to improve the content. Um, technical accuracy, you know, we're, we're always going to take. I don't think we're going to throw out a bunch of content here, but I think a lot of it is going to end up being reworked into something that is is more streamlined and, and makes more sense with the rest of the the PowerShell documentation. But that that might be a little ways off, um, just given the the current state. Um, can we talk about the announcements repo? Repo, if we uh, like, some people don't seem to be aware that we'll announce all of our security. Uh, Issues through there. Yeah, um, I just like while we're still on the documentation topic, just going to address okay. these questions real quick. Um, so, any updates to the documentation that was Steve was working with regards to the PowerShell Core compatibility pack? Um, I know that the compatibility pack has um, the uh, you know some very basic documentation in the README for that repo, um, but I should caveat that it is very much not done. Um, you know, we've talked about it at uh, conferences. We've talked about um, you know, the, uh, the sort of like import remote module or what we're now calling import win module. Um, that stuff is is still very much in the works. Um, and I understand there's a lot of confusion between the compatibility pack for .NET Core that we shipped as part of PowerShell versus this Windows compatibility module um, that uh, went out in, in GitHub and, and is the import win module thing. Um, we'll have a story out there at some point. Uh, you know, I I understand this is like pretty confusing. We had to move very fast on our side in order to get all this stuff done um, and make sure that the story that we we crafted went through our RFC process and also made sense for Windows. Um, so uh, and and was in time for Windows. Um, so like definitely intend to demystify. Understand that it's super confusing. It's confusing even for a lot of folks internally, and and we will get there. Um, Real quickly, this is this Mike, the one who answered the, asked the question. Um, how will that information be disseminated? Will that be like a PowerShell team blog entry? Should, should I follow that space? or? I think it'll, it'll almost certainly start as a blog. Um, I would continue uh, uh, following, and I'm going to put the link here. Um, I think it's PowerShell slash Windows compatibility. Um, so so in, in order of sort of the way that it trickles out, you'll probably see changes to that readme first. Um, followed by, uh, you know, a, a more a le a less formal but more inf more formal than the README uh, type blog, um, and then at some point that blog will make its way into documentation uh, officially. And that's that's really the model we always want to follow. Um, and I understand that we're we've not been traditionally very good at this. Um, we still are deep in documentation backlog, uh, uh, you know, purgatory, um, but. I think the Windows compatibility thing and the PowerShell standard SDK are really the top of my list um, in terms of, of explaining these more esoteric concepts that, that need to be fleshed out uh, in, in some formal docs. So, yeah, definitely um, keep yelling at me, at us, not just me. Um, just me, just yell at me. Uh, I, I'm a pretty good punching bag. Um, Travis, you want to talk about the announcements repo? Uh, so, uh, if you could bring it up, uh, yep. I can put the URL if you want. Um, the, um, so, we'll announce all of our security releases, out, at least from the PowerShell core team, which includes uh, mm. VS, the, the VS extensions. And um, um, as soon as we release it, we'll, well, as soon as we can, we'll have a... Uh, a announcement of uh, the security bulletin on the README. There's information on how we're tagging. If we have major breaking changes, we plan on announcing them there. Um, I'm not sure 
Uh, that's what we discussed with Steve, and I'm not sure if Steve's discussed that with uh, Joey. Yep. Um, the, so you can watch this issues in this uh, repo Here for uh, security changes. So if you scroll to the very bottom, it, it talks about uh, like the tags that are being used. It hasn't updated the screen again. <laughs> <laughs> again? The, just... Why is he doing this to me? The... Um, Exciting. Um, this is the same model .NET follows. So each security announcement will also have a link to the CVA, CVA in it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. And the main purpose there is to... So you know, you're you have a central place where you can go for our security updates, our security announcements. Yeah, and additionally, I mean these these CVEs are like quote unquote official CVEs in the sense that uh, I think that when we link into the is there a link here? Into the, I don't see a link to the CVE issues. Oh, which for the editor services? Services. Oh, I might not have included it because I don't think the other ones did it. But. Uh, the other ones, previous ones, have linked to the CVEs. So yeah, this external links here. So the um, again, my screen is my screen is totally frozen here. But if you if you go in and you scroll to the bottom of one of these issues, um, you will. And I'm going to do this one more time to see if uh, this actually refreshes me. I'll do a share a window on the. Oh, I can't do that with Edge. No, you can't. So the CVE actually links to MITRE, MITRE.org, which M-I-T-R-E, um, which is the official, uh, it's un, unofficial place from one of these third-party uh, CVE database. Well, that, uh, that's who MSRC, our security team, actually works with to publish our CVEs. Right. But these things, uh, so, so this is where you're going to see it show up quote unquote first, there's a lot of security vendors that use this database as uh, the way that they find out about vulnerabilities and what software you're using, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but a lot of these CVEs end up trickling out to other databases that other vendors use and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, this is, for those of you that have been Linux admins, I think this is how uh, you do a lot of tracking of, of whether or not your software is. So. Um, yeah, if you if you need this form of the CBE, we, we should be linking to that. Um, and I think Tyler's just making sure that we have an official link at the bottom of the uh, be in compliance with that promise. So good deal. Cool. Um, I'm looking down the table now. Uh, Keith, do you want to talk about yourself at all and just how you're? Uh, uh, myself. Talk about myself. Talk about myself. I'm program manager in the PowerShell team. I've uh, been here for quite a while. I've also been uh, working around Windows for a long time, and I've been the owner for WinRM for ages, and I have recently um, taken over OpenSSH along with my other duties. Um, and the other duties that I came here mainly to talk about today are um, PowerShell Gallery related, which I'm the PM owner for that. Um, I'll spend just a minute focusing on PowerShell gallery changes. We do have a bunch of changes that are coming out. Um, Joey, may I take over? Yeah, go for it. Rocking and rolling. So that I'm, I'm Since your screen's locked anyway, we'll see if we can can't. freeze mine and freeze everybody else's. Do um, anything. I will wait for just a second to see if anything shows up. OK, good. Uh, for those of you who pay detailed attention to the PowerShell gallery all the time. This is the statistics page from the current PowerShell gallery, and you will notice that we are at 27 million downloads per month in June, and I'll tell you that that number has gone up in July. We're continuing to get a number of downloads, and the uh, number is increasing pretty dramatically in DSC, which surprised us. Uh, if you look at the downloaded things for the last six weeks, this is DSC stuff. And quite honestly, we don't know why. But sudden uptick in, in use of DSC across a huge broad spectrum of locations, and that's really all the data we have. Um, and so all the Azure stuff seems to be falling by the wayside. I mean, they only get what? 
a million seven downloads in a month. Gee. Okay, so with all that stuff that's <laughs> happening, um, we started looking at, uh, actually quite a while ago, trying to make PowerShell Gallery uh, more robust and faster, and we had some issues with the gallery um, supporting things like CDN. Some of that was in the client, some of that was in the service. So if you go to the PowerShell Gallery anywhere in the UI today, you will see this link. It is a plain text link because this is our announcements banner, and it tells you to take a look at preview.powershellgallery.com, which is live, and we are looking for feedback. This is the first view. I will tell you that what is working today, um, the fit and finish issues are, are still very much there. So you're gonna see pretty rapid changes in UI. What is not, what is stable right now is the functional differences. And so I'll run you through quickly what the, the biggest change items are. Um, the, by the way, you're, you'll see some odd behaviors because I'm logged in with um, my account because I'm one of the gallery administrators. It, see, it says that everything in the world is mine and it shows an admin link. So as you're looking at this, don't expect that to happen for you. And don't, unless you are coming to work for the PowerShell gallery team, in which case, give me a call. Um, you will, however, see that we're making some changes to layouts and structures, and we'll take a look at, um, boy, that font just looks ugly in, in this thing. Um, I'm gonna take a look at this module just because it's got a lot of elements to it. We're focusing on trying to get the more relevant items displayed to the top of the screen faster, so we're taking a lot of the noise for any given item that used to exist for the PowerShell gallery, and we're collapsing it into uh, expandable sections. One of the elements of feedback we're looking for from people is, you know, do we have the right stuff? So you can still see all the item details if you're interested, but the question is, is this the right details? So we're looking for that feedback. By the way, where to give us feedback? There's a link to the FAQs at the bottom of every page. Um, this is the FAQs for the preview. It's going to go away when we go uh, when we're done with it. But there's a link there to the GitHub location for the PowerShell Gallery. No, we are not going to share the PowerShell Gallery code there. But since everything else is in GitHub.com/PowerShell, PowerShell Gallery issues are also being tracked there. Okay. Um, so, if you have feedback on this stuff, please let us know. One of the big elements of change that you will see, people have been asking for this for ages, download a raw and update file. We're really wondering what people are going to do with this, because downloading an update file other than using it to put it in your own internal repo means that you want to handle manually installing this thing and it only installs that nutcake file. It does not install the dependencies. This is not installed. This is give me this package. So that's documented. It is consistent with what NuGet does. Um, by the way, if anybody's surprised we're a NuGet-based repository, um, so what you're seeing is a lot of alignment with NuGet stuff. The other major changes that you're gonna see other than layout, look and feel, are mostly showing up in here, okay? So, this is starting to look a lot like what NuGet supplies. There are people who have said, you know, gosh, I wanna change my email address, and so they contact the PowerShell gallery administrators. Do it yourself. You can do it now. Have fun. Um, email notifications, we've added support so that the email notifications, this is flickering back and forth. I'm gonna make this full screen, see if I can make the flickering go away. Um, notify me when an item um, is pushed to the PowerShell gallery. Um, and this also means that if you are a co 
owner for something on the gallery, you'll get that notification. That's a very popular feature. Um, and then login account. You can change your login account. Um, it still has to be an M a Microsoft ID, but this is something that people have had issues with because they started with one account and they no longer use it. So these are things that you can now affect change for. And no, you don't change the profile picture here. You change the profile picture in Gravatar. Um, some of the other big changes are showing up as security relevant changes in um, API keys. Okay, we are adopting the majority of the API key model. This is important. Everybody, please pay attention. There are two things on this page that are now going to count to you a ton. First off, you will notice on this page there is no place where I can copy my current API keys. I'm letting that sink in for a reason. When you change your API key, when you create a new API key, at that point in time, you can fetch your API key. Once you navigate away from the page, it's gone. The ability to copy it is gone, and it never shows up. So, for example, I have no fears about creating some, um, let's see here, uh, PS Core call uh, API key, and there's some scoping things that you can now do. You can say, I only want this to apply to a certain set of my items, but at the end of the day, um, boy, the UI refresh on this is just thrilling. Um, I'm going to say, it's due to you too. Uh, it's just slow, the, the UI refresh there. Now, I created the API key. I can copy it now. Um, you guys never saw it, right? So if I go someplace else, let's go statistics. Let's go back. It's that copy feature is gone. All right. So, oh, I didn't actually create it. Um, so the the long and short of it is the API keys are only available immediately after creation. The other thing that you're going to see here is there's a full access API key that never expires. That's the API key that you've been using from the previous PowerShell gallery forever. All right? That API key actually is a security risk, and every new API key that you create will have an expiration. If you need to refresh this API key, if you need to retrieve this API key, you will lose it. Because in the future, the security requirements are every API key expires. So we're not gonna break you, you continue working, everything works as long as you've got it. But if you need to create a new one, it will have an expiration. If you need to get the API key back, use regenerate. Regenerate will give you the copy button again. Okay? Are you sure you want to do that? Yes, I am sure. Trust me. Really, I do know what I'm doing. All right. Now, copy is back again. It'll be back as long as I'm looking at the page. Those are important changes. So that's the PowerShell gallery stuff. There's also some work that we're doing in PowerShell get that's going to align with this. Obviously, we're going to swap. Hello. I still think I'm presenting, but unfortunately, Skype doesn't. Uh, no, it still thinks you're presenting. We have your mouse. You have my mouse, but you can't actually see what's behind it. All right, so I'll go back to the PowerShell galleries. Well, I'll just talk to these. Um, Obviously, we're updating to the latest version of the NuGet uh, XE that's out there, and that's already happening. We've also added support for CDN, which means that particularly when you're using the new gallery interface, you should see some faster response times. Um, so those things are coming in the client. 
Things we are going to work on between now and when the GA, the PowerShell gallery uh, updates, which we're targeting for somewhere along Ignite timeframe, along with everything else that Microsoft does. Um, so some of the other changes that we are trying to get through is uninstalling dependencies. So when you install a package that has a whole bunch of dependencies, you have to know how to uninstall the dependencies yourself. We're going to try to fix that. Having update module have a flag that says um, just overwrite the existing one or rather replace it. Don't leave many, many versions of the same module on my system. Um, filtering on item owners, uh, something that most people are, un are unaware of today is that right now I can filter on the author, right? But that's just a string in the manifest. We do watch for people stealing things like Microsoft, but if somebody stole, you know, said, I'm publishing as Joey, unless Joey noticed it, we wouldn't necessarily catch it. However, the owner is a validated field. So that's something that we want to be able to implement. It's a big deal. Uh, that that some, that we are trying to resolve. Um, install module defaulting to current user. Um, right now, today, if you are running as an administrator, you install for everybody. And that behavior is not going to change. Why? 27 million downloads a month work. However, if you try to install as yourself, you have to add this minus scope current user, which is just bad design. We're fixing that. So if you install, if I'm running as a non-admin, we're not going to automatically error out if you try to run install module. Instead, we will install as you, whoever you are. So it'll install for just Keith on my box. Um, that's the top requested feature change. The other fixes that we're looking at are um, basically the VSTS package management feed support uh, when you're using PowerShell GET. And so uh, non-path authentication, removing the need for registering new gate exe with uh, credentials. These are things that are on our plan list. We don't know how much of it we're going to get done before Ignite. Some of these changes are big. Um, and then continuing on with things we want to do, but we don't know how soon we'll get them done, are uh, system-wide uh, PowerShell repositories. So right now when I register a PS repository, even when I'm admin, it's only for me. Um, and a group policy for, for repository management. These are things that are all in the command line side. So I do, um, we are at 10.31 I'm here. Done. And I, I see, yeah, no, no worries. Um, I just wanted to make sure we, we sort of wrapped things up and, and uh, everybody had a chance to ask questions. We are okay staying here if you guys are okay staying here. Yeah, you, did you have anything else there? No, nope, I just hit the bottom of my list, man. That Eight. was beautifully timed. Sweet. So, uh, call to action for y'all. Go to PowerShell Gallery. There's a link there. Well, there's a, a URL reference to the home page there to go to preview.powershellgallery.com. Give us feedback. Uh, if it's about the UI fonts and look and feel, you might want to wait two weeks, but we'd love to hear it anyway. Awesome. I've linked to all that stuff in our notes as well. So uh, once you, once I eventually post these, everybody knows I take forever on this, but I'll try to have it done by tomorrow. Um, then you should be able to, to find that there as well. Um, I do want to call out uh, the markdown support you were talking about in the gallery pages. Is that a thing? No. Okay. No, what is a thing is markdown support in PowerShell Core Preview 4. And that's actually one of the big things that I didn't, uh, forgot to call out for Preview 4. Definitely try those out. We've got a handful of new Markdown command lists that are shipping there, so you can actually render Markdown in the console, uh, and so you uh, you know get all the fun headers and, and bold italic, etc., um, with various colors and, and ways to do emphasis. So check that out. Um, it's very much not finished uh, from the the color styling standpoint. Uh, you know, we we want to make sure that that everybody has a chance to give us feedback on the defaults, um, and then there, there are 
uh, a lot of ways to, to extend and configure uh, the however you want your markdown stuff to look. So, um, yeah, check it out, Preview 4. Um, I don't think anybody has anything else. Uh, if there's any more questions, again, like feel free to uh, post them right now. Um, but otherwise, thank you guys for joining. We really appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you in a month. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day, and, and enjoy your weekend. Get that wave in here. Got to get the wave. There you go. No, that wave. Yeah. yeah, the wave emoji. Okay. <laughs> so remember, there's, there's the, got to do it right. Uh, the the do royal it wave. Shoulder, do it the, okay. the, just the, the, just the, 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 yeah. We're still on camera. Um, yes, I know. That's, this will be, this will be on the YouTube video. See you guys. Bye bye.